Broadcast, we will be we will have an interview with a girl in our school that truly shows inspirational leadership. WBIL has been holding off to showcase this club hoping to get pictures of the boys. Unfortunately, the WBIL photographer missed the opportunity. The focus now of their soccer is now outdoors. But let's take a look at the club. Currently, indoor soccer is for boys and girls in 4th and 5th grades. The 6th graders will be getting together in the near future. Indoor soccer readies the players for the spring league that begins at the end of April. The indoor game helps the players learn the rules as well as prepares them with skills needed for outdoor soccer. It's really fun. <laughs> If you didn't participate this year, you may want to watch for the ne for next year when we hope it will start up again. We have breaking news on catching a whole class valuing our school. Mrs. Tops, Mrs. Tops' class picked up the playground. They showed value in our school. They showed value in how our school looks and keeping it safe for others to play. Great job, Miss Thompson, sixth grade. Next up, a girl who, who should inspire us all. Kennedy is in sixth grade in our school. She has diabetes. Before she comes, what is diabetes? Diabetes means too much sugar in the blood. Sugar comes from the foods we eat, like bread, cereals, pasta, rice, fruit, starch, vegetables, and dairy items. Sugar is used by the body for energy to run, skip, and play, and play and swim. If there is not enough insulin, or if the insulin can't open the door to the cells, the sugar levels rise in the blood, and diabetes occurs and guess what even animals get diabetes you do not get diabetes from eating too much sugar and you can't and you do not catch it from staying next to someone with diabetes let's talk to kennedy and find out more about diabetes and her exciting plans hi i'm kennedy and this is my mom i was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes four years ago when i was seven years old Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease where the immune system destroys cells in your pancreas called beta cells. Beta cells make insulin, which our bodies need to process the carbohydrates we eat. Carbohydrates are in, our, are in so many things that we eat every day, including bread, pasta, desserts, even fruits and vegetables. Because my body doesn't make insulin, I have to give it the insulin it needs. When I was first diagnosed, I had to be given at least four shots a day. But now I have an insulin pump, so I only have to have a shot every three days. In fact, we both got insulin pumps at the same time. I was diagnosed with type 1 di diabetes when I was 15 years old, and it can run in families. When I was in the hospital, when I was diagnosed and organized, called JDRF, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, gave me a goodie bag full of things that would help me learn how to live with type 1 diabetes. JDRF is the leading global organization funding type 1 diabetes research. There is no cure for type 1 diabetes, and JDRF's mission is to find one. The goal is to turn type 1 into type 9. I am making that my goal too. 
On May 7th, I am participating in the JDRF One Walk, raising money to fund my research to find a cure. My goal is to raise at least $1,000 this year. Kennedy has also become a youth advocate for JDRF and was one of 150 youth chosen out of over 1,300 applications to attend the JDRF Children's Congress in Washington, D.C. this summer, which is a great honor. While, I, while in Washington, I will be meeting our congressmen and women to share with them what it is like with type 1 diabetes. It is my hope that by sharing my personal story, members of Congress will continue to support funding of programs for better treatment of type 1 diabetes and continued research to find a cure. I would love to give you an update on my trip when I return. Thank you so much, Kennedy, for helping to understand diabetes better. We wish you success in Washington. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. It's time to start to hear some of uh, your suggestions for the obstacle course for Mr. Gaffney's next challenge. Let's go to the suggestion box and read some of the ideas. Here are some suggestions that you had for the obstacle course. Rope climb, trampoline, bobbing for apples, three-legged race, word per minute texting challenge, cup stacking challenge, fruit loop eating contest using chopsticks, water bucket challenge, obstacle course of Orbeez, swim across the rope into a ball pit, run across stepping stone, then climb a wall of mats, jump down the, and jump into the trampoline and then climb across the monkey bars and slide down the pole. Duck take a full of my own ass. Throw free throw and if he misses, pour something on him. Stay tuned next week to find out what will be on the list. Those are awesome, some awesome ideas. WVIL would like to challenge Mr. Gaffney to compete against a team made up of fourth fifth and sixth graders on the obstacle, obstacle course. What do you think, viewer, viewers? Do you think Mr. Gaffney will go for it? Would you want to do part of the obstacle course as a re representative of the student body? Stay tuned for next week's episode and we will find out. The coin count is up next. We will start our coin count with with 8,873 coins turned into the basket in the office. The coin count for this week is 85 gold coins, 36 red coins, and 32 blue coins turned in, make a, making a total of 153 coins for the week. This is a total of 8,896 coins. Our new goal is 12,000 coins. We need to reach it in this last marking period, so turn in those coins. Get Moving guys, we need coins or we won't have an obstacle course. This brings an end to our broadcast this morning. Please remember to read, read, read and reach for those math goals. Don't forget to find value in everything you do. Be an inspiration to others and be a leader. This, this is WVIL wishing you an adventurous day. WVIL.